And of course, driving that partnership between Azerbaijan and Israel is a, is a very strong defense partnership. Um, and your country is involved in a, in a conflict uh, right now uh, with Armenia. Uh, has the defense partnership with Israel given Azerbaijan an advantage in that conflict? And it, we're also thankful to the State of Israel for uh, defense cooperation and military cooperation. It's a, one of the signs of confidence and trust between our countries that we are cooperating in such an, a specific area. Azerbaijan was subject for unjust treatment and military occupation. And uh, Azerbaijan's uh, uh, war, and in a 44 days war, that's called, against a military occupation of Armenia, and defense cooperation with Israel, and particularly with the defense equipment, and plays in a crucial, important role. And and, uh, but we are thankful to you know, Israel and Israel people that is also well inscribed in the memory of Azerbaijani people that we very much appreciate. Uh, but of course, Azerbaijan and Israel cooperation among us in a defense and security field is much broader. It covers agriculture, education, uh, education and some other many fields that we also, on a regular basis, with our Israel friends and partners, identify new areas of cooperation for the benefit of two countries. But of course, defense cooperation is also crucially important that Azerbaijan government and Azerbaijan people highly appreciate. And, and while I have you here, if I could just ask you um, about what's happening in Nagorno-Karabakh. This is the contested mountain region of Azerbaijan, um, because it is being widely reported that Azerbaijan has gone back on the terms of a 2020 ceasefire that was brokered by Russia and is not allowing any food or medical aid into the Armenian population uh, of that region. Um, is that true? What's happening? Really, for Azerbaijan's strategy is that war is over. We are in the process of the winning of the peace. But unfortunately, what we see from Armenian side, Armenian side doing all the best to lose a peace. But we, we, won't, we don't want to give it a chance to lose a peace. And uh, Azerbaijan actually suggested for Armenia to sign in a peace treaty. And uh, sometimes in a diplomatic circles, it's called like in a Camp David process, not in a Palestinian track, but in a track between Egypt and Israel that changed the entire map of the Middle East. And therefore, there is such a suggestion. We are working with that. And United States and some other countries are supporting that process. But second track, the second layer of that process is a reintegration of Karabakh uh, to the political, economic, and social spectrum to Azerbaijan. But unfortunately, what we see uh, on the ground, there is a separatist entity subordinated to Armenia and financed and also supported by Armenia. They would like to continue their gray zone status and not to integrate to Azerbaijan's political, social, economic life. What we're saying that one road is good, but two roads is much better. Therefore, Azerbaijan has built new roads and also connecting with the mainland Azerbaijan and also giving them a chance to Karabakh Armenians to communicate with the mainland Azerbaijan as well. Road is not only one way, there is always a two this ways. This is the Lachin. Uh, Lachin Hankandi road that connects mainly Armenia to Karabakh, but we also say that there is an Agdam Hankandi road that's in a flat, that's more efficient, and logistic and transport wise, it has much more capabilities and it also direct access to all markets of Azerbaijan, including the all markets of our neighboring countries, in a sense, Armenians from Karabakh and residents of uh, Armenian residents of Karabakh will have a better chance to communicate internally within Azerbaijan and in some other uh, uh, regional uh, countries as well. Therefore, it's an opportunity. It's also an opportunity for the integration process. But you see that they say that no. It's not unacceptable. We would like to have a gray zone. We have, would like to have an army on the ground. They have 10,000 strong militia groups and ter uh, terror groups as well. And they're also uh, threatening uh, with the missiles some other uh, military capabilities, Azerbaijani civilians as well. There wasn't a, such a practice as well. But uh, everybody should also understand that as a sovereign country, Azerbaijan any longer cannot afford to have in a gray zone, uh, such as militia groups and armed forces, and also illegal uh, separatist entity on the soil. That is the core of the problem. Unfortunately, what we see is in a wave of the new stereotypes and also media campaign and disinformation campaign against Azerbaijan. Do you dispute yes. that coverage? Okay.